right, Steph, we're back with Daisy. And just, you know, you need to just understand, she's always going to be picking up something. You know, she needs to have just some toys that she can carry around. That's that's what Tommy has, one of my puppies. And Kanga, uh, if you put him in the backyard without toys and stuff to play with. He starts playing with the buckets. It's very annoying. Anyway, the sound box, uh remote got lost, but I just found it, so I'm going to try to put this down here so it's not so loud. Um, so she's going to pick up stuff. We just, we need to understand, we, we need to just make sure she gets something that's not going to be a problem. I, if you said, I see a lot of videos where she's not carrying anything around. I never see her where she's not carrying something around. And the same with Tommy and the same with Sorsha. That's how they are. They run. They're going to grab something. If it's a water bottle or whatever, you're just going to have, that's just who they are. So trying to just make them not pick stuff up isn't going to work. But we definitely can't tug with it. Hi, Deb. Uh, Deb, what about the... What about Colby's brother? I've got the one Kanga. He's already trained. He's not neutered, though. That's the only thing. You'd have to get him neutered. I could do a fast deal on him, because I've got to get him neutered, too, and I'm not going to have time to do that until after the puppies. But he's already all trained. They'd probably be really cute together. All right. Um, let me do this real quick. I'll get him out. All right. That's kind of loud. Hang on. All right, so what we want to do is get the collar on, and she, what you don't want, because I think you have to say to yourself, if it's a struggle to get the collar on, I may already be failing. I may already be failing, you know, because that's kind of like somebody saying, get in the car to go to work, and they're just, you know. Oh, she is. She sees the leash differently now. That's her cue, though, when my hand got... And I'm not looking at her at all. I'm just looking at the leash. She's going to look at it, and then I'm going to back it up. So, the platform is good, too. Because if you do have one that jumps, you can stand far enough away that when they jump, they kind of fall. That's not your fault. It's incidental. All right, so let's get the leash on because this is her. This is her big. And I'm not having any reaction. If you said your character has no reaction whatsoever, doesn't even notice a dog biting a leash, that's me. All right, so whoops. <laughs> See, it's already coming in handy, Steph. All right, so my job is to get this on without the dog saying OMG. Get your thing tucked through there if you can. All right, so now I know I've got a little bit more shot because I can bump that pager. So I am going to do that. I'm on zero. Daisy. holding my leash like this. All right, that's still too loud. Hang on. Yeah, I remember now. The thing, I had stuffed cotton balls in the top and taped the top of this thing shut so it wouldn't be that loud. Whatever it originally was, was... Daisy? All right, so she's biting at the leash, but this is what I'm doing. Oh, I don't have it on yet. Whatever it was, was designed, I don't know, I gotta ask Mark. I forget now, honestly, I forget what it was designed for. I know it was something to do with the bird launcher, but I wanna say it made a quacking sound or something. You know, real loud coming out the top like that. Daisy? So I, I'm not having any reaction, and then I'm just going to set a new little precedent. So if
if I started pulling on the leash? Well, she started to bite at it. All right, watch. But I'm not, you know, she's the All right, so there's my... She's thinking to herself, oh, I can tell which way it's going. It gives itself away. It gives itself away with its hand. Alright, so same thing. I want to be able to turn her this way. Turn, turn. Back up a little. Oh, and if you said, what was that? That was Molly. or anything. I can assure you that. I just dead canned it. But the leash is not, the leash, it, you know, if you took a picture, the leash is silhouetted by my body, so you're not, it's not dangling in front of her. All right, but turn this way, this way. Back up a little. And I'm going to start adding the down you can start doing it like this. You can just put your foot on there as the precursor. And that was very impersonal. She jumped up, but the, the pull was coming from down there. And I, there's, there's a lot of times, you guys, that Daisy, you've got to not change her expression. So I just forgot about that. She started biting the leash. If I went to force her down, oh, she'd bite the leash down for sure. So now I'm just going to get rid of it. So same thing. I think you should have one hand here. The other hand just sort of surgically removes it. Okay, Deb, I'll get that one out in a sec. All right, so now she's biting the leash. So this is what I can do. Daisy! correct it for tugging. No, you really can't. Daisy. And if you said why, what people need to understand is behaviors become in, in, entrenched and embedded in the dog. And so that's why you can't get rid of them. I'm just removing the causation, basically. Daisy. All right, let me get her back on the platform. So, th I, I will tell you the dog and Jenny. I kept holding it down. She's already looking for this stuff. She's good at that. I'm going to tell you the platform is good too because the dog is right there in front of you and it's not jumping on you. Alright, she wants to do her dumbbell stuff, so let me get her dumbbells. Need to order her these, the pink ones, of course. Alright, so this is what I think I can do, Mike. I think I can get it running around the cone. Because I, I think you can even kind of use... Oh, I forgot. She gets the basket too now. Alright, so... Yes. 
So the difference between this, honestly, nothing is being thrown. If you want, yay! If you want this dog to get all jacked up and start snapping around and get real grabby and real worked up, start throwing something around. That's really the difference, because if you're just, I think people should just work on delivered a hand in their house. You shouldn't do any fetching. Yay! Alright, so that's my signal. I, good. My hand is back. Hey. She's going to try to get the basket. If she puts that thing in that basket, Steph, that's going to be scary. She almost did. Hey. She almost put it in the basket and brought both. Alright, so my job is just look. So that's what I want you to think of. I'm not throwing anything because that's gonna, because I think we want this to occur not in heightened reality, just in real reality, you know, because the handler is stationary. Um, and so yeah, you're, you're really not trying to amp it up at all. All right, we can do one more round. I think if I move my cone a little bit, I might be, let me try this. I, I, made, a, I made a barrier right there because of that sign. Anyway, it's Motorhead Friday. If I go into town with this Motorhead hoodie on, all these guys come up to you, oh, Motorhead, yay. God help me. Ah, right, so look, I'm just looking. So I got the right trajectory. If I if I if I'm thinking right, it might go the way I think. Oh, she got two. Oh, she gets a plus plus. She gets a plus plus stuff. You see, she's taking the same trajectory. No, now she got been back on. Oh, now she made a liar out of me. All right, she gotta get the basket though. All right, Steph, she did. She got A plus plus, so she gets going to field trip. Steph's like, yay! Yeah. Uh, the leash biting. I mean, that's. Hi, George. Uh, you know, that's what you have to think of. If, 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 you know, you said, well, I'm bringing it here to get all these things corrected, I'd say, but, but these are entrenched behaviors. So you can't, the only thing you can try to do is fill in the trench. I, I know that sounds crazy, but you, you know, if I said I'm gonna make personal attacks on these behaviors, it's not gonna work for anybody else. You know, it might work for me, but it's not going to work for anybody else. So your job is to really honestly just condition the dog with the pager so that people can do that. <laughs> you know, that's going to help bridge the gap between handling issues. All right, you guys, I'm going to, anyway, George, let me know, and uh, JC, let me know if that sound box helps you, you know, because there is, you know, if you said, what is the art of the pager? JC. <laughs> grabbing this leash. And it just keeps falling out. Yay! 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 Is, is really the duration that you're holding it down. But, I think in the bigger picture, what you have... Daisy! Yay. It gives you the ability to react in one one hundredths. Daisy! Yay. Can you even believe the leash just doesn't just doesn't go away. It's just here. It's just wherever it is. Or I turn around, I stick it in my pocket. It's fine. So, 
it's it's the duration that you're holding and I you know there are times and just and it's stupid because it does it does switch off after X amount of time but that was probably only three or four seconds so what I'm saying to myself and what she was doing was grabbing the leash she was coming she was just taking a delay but that if I have the ability to act within one one hundredth of a second that is going to help level the playing field. Because if you said, well, what is your reaction time otherwise? Oh, it would be measured in seconds at the very least. At the very least. So if we're talking about an animal that can react in a tenth of a second, if I have the ability to react in one one hundredth of a second, then that's going to give me an advantage. I, you know, that's how we've got to look at it. We can't look at it as... We'll correct them. They'll know. They'll, they're going to do all these things. Everything I'm teaching these dogs to do is stuff they already do. Dogs already spin around on a dime if they see something or whatever. And they run really, really ass fast. So all I'm doing is taking that and putting it back in my drive. I'm not creating anything they don't already have. I'm gonna see if I can get her to default to the down. You know, and because if you said, well, how do you get rid of the jumping? They've got a, their internal dialogue has to be, that doesn't work at all. She's thinking about it. And it was my fault for moving. But you know, if you said, what's that? It's an entrenched behavior. That, that's where you have to do the mannequin challenge. And that's, that's all it takes. That's all it takes. All it takes is that dog for it to complete. Oh, it didn't work. Not, I'll be corrected for doing it because if it works 50% of the time. Because what they end up saying is, oh, you can get a reaction out of it. It's not saying, oh, that was terrible. That was the worst correction ever. You know what? She's going to think much more quickly to do it. But unless she thinks it's her idea. You know, and then I can just add the pager to that. But, oh, no, she was off in the beginning. Oh, she would jump and clot my legs. I'll tell you what it was. It was absolutely awful. All right, you guys, put me a message what dog you want to see. I can go get, uh, uh, oh, and the Great Dane, and, uh, I don't know if you like, uh, Great Dane, George, uh, but I've got a Great Dane that comes here. It's coming, uh, the Great Dane and the Weimaraner are coming back in, and, you know, again, with dogs like that, you've got to say to yourself, do I really want my methodology to be, I can physically control you because those things are scary strong you know their their bones of their their leg is is bigger than your forearm i mean a lot yes that's gonna be a problem all right you guys i will be right back